will literally show you the career that you've been wanting to see. Yes, it is time to experience the nooks and crannies of Korea as if with your own two feet on. J Patch! With Jennifer Jin. That's right, every week it's time to take a camera out and about and show you career, not just the inside of the studio. Although today you are getting two for the price of one. You can see inside my bedroom as well as Jen's brand new ears. How are you doing, Jen? Hey, Peter, how are you? Uh, Your bedroom, by the way, looks really cool and clean. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's because you can't see down. If you can see anything on the floor and this computer level, you would not say that at That's all. That's the Jen. beauty of doing Zoom service, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What is with the ears, can I ask? Well, Jen? you know, I heard that you're not in the studio today, and you're uh-huh. the main energy of this show. And no. I needed some extra vibe here. I'm all alone here. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. So you've dressed up. Just to give the listeners a bit more fun yeah, to look hopefully. at. hopefully. Oh, that's wonderful. I love your furry ears. I'd like to Thank borrow you. them one day. You know, I'm teaching <laughs> English at EBS, and I uh-huh. use these kind of accessories to kind of, you know, bring some fun element. And I thought, it, why not here as well? Does it help teach English as well? I think it's like it. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I think so, absolutely. Well, yeah, we had Jen in quarantine about two weeks ago, I know. Right? And now it's me, and I'm sure our other guests who haven't caught COVID yet might well end up doing this. So it's good to get as much practice as possible. (laughs) I guess everyone's getting it after all, right? In the end. It does seem like it's hard to avoid. Although, fingers crossed, still, my children and my wife have no symptoms and they're testing negative. So, that's good to hear. How are you? I can hear your voice a little (laughs) bit horsey. You okay? Noah said, it's a husky mm. voice. You sound a bit sexy, Peter. What do you think? <laughs> Shall I keep this voice? I think, you know, um, it gives different vibe. I like <laughs> it, actually. Yeah. No, I don't think you like it as much as, as Noah does. So I'll save it just for Noah. Uh, today's hashtag, Jen, is yes. SNS. I think we say more in Korea. Mm-hmm. Or social media, we maybe say more in the West. How do you feel about social media? Because you're a YouTuber as well. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, social media to me is really crucial tool in many ways. Um, So, you know, like you said, I teach uh, Korean and English through SNS. So it's a great method to promote myself, provide services. But also, you know, at this time when we have trouble meeting people, you know, mm. it's also very important to kind of continue your relationship with your friends mm. just to be part of the community. Yeah, that right? is a good point, isn't it? Um, very positive aspects. And, you know, Lynn, mm. our listener from North Carolina, she said at the time of COVID, when it began, I had one social media account and now I have five Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. Weverse, Kakao Talk, and Discord. Wow. And a lot of your content is dedicated to ARMY and BTS, I say, I can see, Lynn. And that's mm-hmm. wonderful if you find a community to kind of share your interests with and stuff like that. But do you find there are any maybe yeah. negative things, negative aspects to social media? You know, I'm so glad that you bring this question because while I was driving down come all the way up to Arirang, um, I I was just going over my daily routine. (laughs) Because, you know, at home, it's really hard to really meditate or think about my life. It's so hectic at home. And I realized that one of the negativity about using SNS is that I just keep on comparing myself with others. Because you see that fancy side of one person, and that doesn't really fully show that person's life but i don't know i just end up just looking at others images and somehow you know just feel bad about myself stuck at home at times something like that absolutely you know and i don't think people post up those lovely photos deliberately to make other people feel bad but it just happens i'm totally the same 
And I'll end up like scrolling through the stories on Instagram right. and just getting more and more like annoyed and angry. <laughs> and then I just have to stop myself. Otherwise, I do it for ages. So I don't really get anything from actually looking at other people's social media. To yeah, be honest, and I, I think, find, yeah. right, exactly. And the reason why it's so hard to control that side is that, as we've been talking about, there are so many good sides about SNS as well. And that's yeah. why, you know, it's all about the balance, I guess. You can't just get rid of the SNS app. I mean, to some people, it's okay. But, you know, a lot of people, we feel really, it's just important in our, in our life now. And yeah. finding that balance, oh, right? Absolutely. As with everything, it's balance. Mm-hmm. And our show, Hashtag Daily K, has a hashtag because we want to be on social media all the time. So listen, <laughs> make sure you follow us on Instagram, Please. on Facebook, on Twitter. But we hope to be giving you information about career and its culture, not making yes. you jealous and things like this. And your corner in particular, Jen, is the one yeah. that we post up the most, actually, with the little video clips on Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Twitter. Adidang Daily K, all one word. So, of course, there are good things to it. But as Jen said, balance. Sure. If you're looking at Daily K's social media pages 24 hours a day, that's too much. You need to slow down, okay? <laughs> Daily K, you can look at 12 hours a day. I think that's that's enough. <laughs> um, so today, Jen, where are you taking us? What are we going to see? Yeah, so today I'm really excited to share this interesting village called Ton Eumun Museum Village. It's hard it's, in English to say that, isn't it? Right. Ton Eumun. Maybe <laughs> uh, it's more well known as Sodemun. So means oh. west. So just to give you a brief background, we have four gates uh, centering the Gyeongbokgung in the very center of the Seoul city. And in the north, west, east, and south, we have each gates there. Mm. And Ton Eumun is the gate uh, erected in the west side. Okie dokie. All right. So what are we going to see in this first video? Then? So in the first part of the video, I'm going to show you this amazing expo going on that I happened to capture um, when I filmed on Saturday. And also, I'm going to show you some popular Korean foods from 70s and 80s. Let's take it away. So this is the entrance of the village. Actually, there were two entrances, and this is the expo with beautiful Kugak Korean traditional music performance. It was all free, by the way. And there were this uh, row of makgeollis, which is Korean traditional alcohol. And they were promoting the upcoming expo, actually, that's going to be um, held this May. Oh, I see. So yeah. at the moment. And there, people were enjoying Korean traditional um, plays like uh, that's Dakchichigi, by the way, you're seeing those two Looks cute weekend. boys. Yeah. And there were people wearing these traditional costumes. And also, I visited this uh, food place where they sell Korean traditional vintage vibe. Um, foods including the tteokbokki and old lunchbox and you're seeing kimbap there and this is misukgaru mixed grain flour oh i love that it's very filling yeah it's been quite some time that i uh, tried it last time really so pleasing this is a whole village museum right this yes area. yeah so that whole village is fully open to the public um it used to be a village inside the Sodemun, the West Gate. And there has been um, continued discussion whether or not we should renovate it fully and make it as a new place. And then in 2015, the city decided to just um, have this original looking of the village, mm-hmm. but adding some stores and places and exhibitions where people can learn about the Korean modern culture. And also you just not see it, but you can actually buy the food and take pictures. It's not in the video, but I happened to go to this vintage photo studio and I took this family photo having this vintage background. Oh, nice. You just did that while you were there. Yeah. Fantastic. So there are lots of things to do. It's not like a museum where... 
everything is open from like nine to five and they're all under the museum umbrella. Yeah. Like there's just random things here and there inside that village. Exactly. There were a museum called t o n u i m u n y o k s a g w a n Um, but I didn't put it in this time because uh, it was actually covered um, before by Cedric. Ah, okay. And so this is apart from that, the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, but it's good to know that that museum is part of this village. Oh, I see. Because, yeah, I remember and I was telling listeners, I think Cedric covered a bit of this. So there might be overlap, but it's been a couple of years. But when I saw your video just then, I didn't recognize any of that from Cedric's video. <laughs> It looks like a completely different area. And mm-hmm. I thought that museum that Cedric went to, I thought that was the whole village, but you're showing us like much wider area, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah, I, I saw the Cedric's video and um, there were t h i s e uh, centers where you can see the daily routine of Koreans from 17s and 80s. which is also really nice, but you have to know there's so many other activities that you can enjoy. The gaming center, uh, where you can see the cartoons and take pictures, have foods, music studios, etc. I saw saw the random kind of bowling game in that video as well, it looked like, with old bottles and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, They were having this uh, festival, and there were uh, a couple of... games that you can just participate freely. Ooh, yeah, and nice. that was part of it. And there was this chebi, chebi chagi, chegi chagi, sorry. Uh, and d a k c h i c h i g i Yeah, Ooh, kids really lovely. liked it. And the Makkoli Expo, you said, mm-hmm. is going to happen in May? Or this is like a yeah, mini version? Yeah, it's going to start it? from May 13th to May 15th. Ah, but they're like preparing for it already? I or think kind they were of promoting it? the upcoming expo. Wow, that's yeah. amazing because we did Makkoli uh-huh. with Chef Ryan very recently as our dish of the day. And oh, nice. uh, a lot of our listeners mm. as well in America, they're getting these kind of artisan Makkolis these days and falling in love with them. Yeah. And we saw on that table, there's a whole range of like traditional ones and more modern ones. I would love to go. And try some of those, Jen. <laughs> and you know, like a couple of months back, I made the makgeolli myself for this show as well. You should <laughs> sell home. it there. You should make your own makgeolli stall. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Welcome to Arirang Radio. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City, 88.1 in Seogipu City, 101.9 in the Daejeong area. We are back for part two, K-Patch with Jen in the studio, looking rather furry and cute with some giant... What kind of ears are they? Rabbit ears? They don't look like Um, rabbits. I think it's... I don't know. Actually, this is the front part. Oh, (laughs) more like a raccoon then Uh, from like Elmo. Yeah, animal with big ears. I absolutely love them. They're amazing. I hope you can leave them in the studio and I'll wear them for Halloween or something. Uh, Jen is no showing problem. us the d o n u i m u n Museum Village. And don't be confused, although it is confusing. Mm. This is also known as Sodemun, right? d o n i m u n and Sodemun are just interchangeable terms for it, right? Exactly. So, yeah. uh, again, there are four gates in Seoul City. And each of them has the names h o d e m u n West, t o n g d e m u n East. But for each gate, they have their own unique name. Yeah, that yeah. is very confusing for foreigners <laughs> because when you see one mm-hmm. name and you maybe haven't learnt it, what's the, I, I think it's for d o n g d e m u n Is it s u n g d e m u n as well? Maybe right. It's the other name. And when yeah. I heard that, I was like, where are you talking about? I've never heard of s u n g d e m u n s u n g d e m u n is the South Gate, n a m d e m u n h u n g i n j i m u n is the East Gate. Right. s u k j o n g m u n not really well known, is the North no. Gate. Oh, yeah. By I've never way. heard that before. Yeah. So if you want to stick to the basics, then you can just go for the, like uh, Jen said earlier, s a d e m u n s a meaning West, t o n g d e m u n t o n g meaning East. Right. And, um, that will work. South. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Mm-hmm. But this museum village is more often called the t o n i m u n Museum Village rather than the s a d e m u n no, Museum yeah, Village. No, yeah, exactly. Right? It's t o n i m u n By the Don't way, Don means explode. deep love, deep relationship. Isn't oh, that lovely? Really? Yeah, total yeah. don. And u i means right. Okay, yeah, as in like correct. Name. Exactly. 
because ah, I had heard the character, the mm-hmm. Oriental character, Ton, isn't that like Handon for Korean pork or something? Yeah, so Ton kind of uh, gave us the image of a pork or money, because Ton ah. is also called as money here. But yeah, you have to know, it's a completely actual... different Chinese letter. Total <laughs> Don and Orta A. Right we got bonus. a lot of comments coming on yes. as well. Uh, I'm trying to read them on YouTube. Steve saying, I always enjoy those traditional folk performances as well as people dressed up in their hanbox. And yeah, when Cedric showed us the video, it was very much like the 70s, 80s. So not like the Joseon dynasty and old traditional hanbox. Yeah. But where you were in your video, there are a couple of like traditional dressed people and some old hanoks as well. Yeah, exactly. There were staffs wearing hanbok and kukak, the Korean traditional music performances. Mm. I think you have to know Tonoi Moon has its re- very deep history going way back to 1392 when Joseon Dynasty first erected. So wow. the door was first um, erected in 1392. Amazing. Yep, and then it was closed for a while in 1413. And then um, sadly in 1915 under Japanese colonial era, the original Sodemun was um, demolished, dismantled no. fully. And then the one we're seeing now is um, relocated. Okay, yeah. so it's been kind of rebuilt and relocated. Yeah, a lot of our traditional cultural artifacts were dismantled mm-hmm. or moved during the Japanese colonial times, which is why there's even more negative feeling towards that time than there might be. Uh, we also had Cisco on board saying, OMG, so lo- much makkali there. I want to be there. And the dakboki, the toshirak, the lunchbox, the kimbap. And I never knew about misukaru. I want to try it. How would you describe misukaru <laughs> to a foreigner? Like, Because it's quite common to have in also the jimjilbang, right? It's the kind so, of yeah, of common, popular ve- beverage that uh, Koreans enjoy a lot uh, ever since they are a kid. I think I used to drink more often when I was little than yeah. now, isn't it? I That's think it's I not feel. not as mainstream, but there are certain occasions, maybe if you're doing a traditional kind of activity like in your video, or like I said, the Jim Bang, the kind of sauna rooms, it's common to have that ice. Uh, and what it is yeah. is what grains and stuff like that that's yeah, been turned so into powder. A, right, it's a mixed grain. Uh, it's a flour. So you pour those flour into the water and you just blend it and have it. But before you pour it into the water, it kind of looks like <laughs> drug, you know? Well, I did hear like a powder, story. <laughs> In like 1990, exactly, there was this uh, student, I'm not sure it's a real story, but I think it was quite a famous episode uh, shared by friends and, you know, uh, Koreans in in the States, um, you know, they they want to have misukaru and their parents send it through their package, but it just looks so much like drugs. And some of them were, yeah, the police came over and checked it out. (laughs) Oh dear, this is way healthier than drugs, we can tell you that, right? I think people are dying. Very healthy. With the barleys and the rice and other, uh, I'm not sure if there's a rice flour, by the way, but barley for sure. And all the yulmus. Yeah. Yeah. And it tastes very savory. And if you put in some syrup, it can taste a bit sweeter. I think they often put that in there. Uh, for the kids to drink it. Stacy saying, oh, the dakji, the kind of uh, pogs that we call it in England, at least, mm-hmm. was inspired by Squid Game. Well, yeah. Stacy, I think we've said it before, like Squid Game made it more popular again, but it has been around for a long, long time. Long game, time. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Tropical K saying something for all ages there as well. Would you recommend it for families, Jen, to go go and take a look oh, at this? Oh, sure, uh, sure. There place. were so many activities that kids can enjoy and the couples can enjoy. There were very beautiful cafes, by the way. Uh, oh, you can nice. just have a lovely date with your loved ones, with your family, with your parents. Because, you know, my stuff. parents really love to see those um, hair shops, Iyongwon. Vintage oh, hair cutting the place. Old style. Yeah. And the photo studio and where they show this daily routine, as you can see from the Cedric place, how the bedroom looked like, those mm. little, um, you know, all sorts of uh, tools that we used to use at home. Yeah, all those little details must reminisce 
must make older people reminisce about those good times. I should take my mum one time, I think. You should. Uh, She'll uh, love uh, it. We've got I Am Cindy Bonke on board saying, Oh, IU is my favourite K-pop star, and I've been listening for a while, a silent listener. Good to have you on board in the messages, Cindy. If you've got anything similar to what we've shown in terms of village museums or an older neighbourhood, send in your photos and videos via Kakao Talk. The username is Daily K. We're going to get on to Jen's second video. What are we going to see in this one? So in the second video, I'm going to show you other hot spots showing Korean modern vintage culture. Mm, nice, let's take it away. So there were these little streets, narrow streets, here and there, and you can listen to the kukak. And there was this poster saying 1947 is the year we don't get pregnant. Oh, <laughs> and really? that kind of slogan, you know, <laughs> they clearly didn't see what was ahead of them, right? And this is the moving horse that I used to ride a lot when I was really little. And there was this gaming place uh, from the 80s and 90s. Some of them, we still use it now. I love a good arcade or gaming. Yeah, scene. and there were so many kids. They loved it. And here you can see a puppy enjoying it as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there were couples. Old Korea, doesn't it? Yeah. And there were other like little mini centers where you can get to know about Korean modern culture and the photo zones. And it's not in the video, but you can also enjoy it with a uh, VR services. Oh wow! You yeah. Can put on like a headset or something. Yeah, they have this facility where you can learn about the Tony Moon history through this VR service. And even though you're not um, at that place, they offer this service on their official website, by the mm. way. If you're interested oh. in, please check it out. Um, I love the mini village there. It looked like you're a giant walking around some of those old yeah. shops and stuff. It's www. just so you know, dmvillage.info, I-N-F-O. If you go in there, you can have that VR service. Oh, so our listeners from all across the globe, you can basically visit Onuman virtually speaking and uh, check it out. I love seeing those old horses. So if you're not watching the video stream, how can we describe them? They're kind of like Korean old school rocking horses, but they've just got springs exactly. attached to them in midair and they yeah. just kind of wobble, right? Yeah, so the difference is that we have that kind of toys that are run with electricity, right? Once you put mm. the coin in. But back sure. in those time, <laughs> it run by the, the spring. And I think in a sense, it's more dynamic because, you know, kids has to move it themselves. Yeah. They have it's to like work you're it riding out. a real, real you horse. rock it, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I remember seeing that, like some right? person, some ajashi would like bring them to an apartment like Chuchajang to yeah. the car park and you'd pay money to sit on this horse, which now you would get in the playground, I suppose. They have those kind of spring things, mm -hmm. but you used to pay for that. Yeah. And, and there was also, and you still see it sometimes today, I don't know if you've had your son go on it, but the little pirate ship. Mm -hmm. that goes backwards and forwards like oh, the, yeah. someone will bring that to an apartment center and it can only sit like maybe four children right i remember like all those yeah going back were you in, in korea then in the 80s i, I used to come every summertime oh, so i see but there was also like people who would bring around trampolines uh -huh. you know right and you could bounce on the trampoline and yeah. then they'd take it away and stuff like that uh Kay saying oh i really love the pet culture in korea animals seem to be really treated like one of the family right yeah these days i see many dogs especially treated actually better than some children <laughs> i feel like yeah definitely it's amazing. yeah they have this <laughs> yumocha what is yeah, it? The, the, the stroller, right? Stroller for the dogs, and it costs really expensive, by the way. <laughs> Some yeah, of them like are the more expensive than the kids' ones. ones. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, we're going to get mm. to some of our listener videos and photos in part three. So whatever comes to mind after you see Jen's yes. videos, you can send in. It could be linked to the retro arcade. It could be linked to like a, a small village, a model village or something like that. Get in touch via Cacao Talk. Our username is Daily K. Uh, we do have something sent in from Yana here. who Because we previewed we were going to do stuff to do with the museums. 
you said, I went to the National Planetarium of Malaysia about two weeks ago after last time during the school days. And it's more of a science exhibition than a museum. The thing that I experienced was the space pod. And you've attached a video. I don't know if we can play that for you guys. And it really rotates and it throws you 360 degrees. Wow. And another part that you enjoyed was the anti-gravity room. Overall, enjoying it with friends, reliving your childhood memories as Malaysians usually went here on a field trip. It looks absolutely spectacular from the outside and inside, Yana. Thank you so much. Are you uh, seeing the sure. photo here? Wow. Yeah, that with all these so realistic. contraptions. Uh, I don't know if you played the video yet. But there's a like simulator there that it looks like Yana got into, which would be unbelievable. And like you said, Jen, there is VR available even for the Donuiman Village Museum. Yeah, they had this、uh, separate place where they show this VR service. It's not that grand, but、mm. you can see the full history of the Donuiman with the service together. Yeah, I'm trying to think of places in the UK that are similar to this. I mean,、mm. London in general just has so many buildings from like a hundred years ago or more.、Right. And so walking through the streets is a bit more like walking through history、uh, is as an everyday thing on your way to work and stuff、yeah. like that, which I guess is the appeal of many European cities like that. But looking on the internet, there are some certain places where they have proper old housing. From maybe a thousand years ago,、wow. like Bury St. Edmunds in Suffolk. They have Anglo Saxon villages, which have been recreated to look like the past. And then you've also got some、uh, places like Chichester in West Sussex, where the buildings are more than 600 years old. Oh, wow. It, it's not that rare in England to find places like that, which is. Kind of cool, I think. Yeah, and you have to know that most of the、um, structures in Korea are built with woods. So、mm. it's not easy to find those houses that have survived over <laughs> several、yeah. centuries, unlike yeah, the ones built with the stones. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a big reason why we don't have the original structures here in Korea. Yeah, because like when I happen to go to European countries, I got really jealous to see those thousand year old houses. Like, <laughs> you know, it's so common to see hundred year old houses. And I wonder why is it so hard to see those houses in Korea? <laughs> But you have to know the,、um, the stones we have in this country,、um, it's really hard to carve it. Ah, that's、really? why we don't have the teddy sock. Wow, that's、mm -hmm. interesting. I didn't know that. that. I, didn't, I just thought maybe the technologies diverge, but the actual type of stone is much more difficult to、yes. make buildings with and stuff.、Uh, Tropic Girl, I wonder if、uh, Kopitinim can get the photos up from Tropic Girl. She sent in these ones. Let me know if they're on the screen, Jen, because I、Yay. can't actually see from here. But they're old fashioned places in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And looking at these photos, some of the buildings seem like they're made of wood, but this is in the old colonial times, it looks like, when Britain was like in charge of the US.、Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. That green couch. Yeah, and they've got some、so、old、cute. fashioned hyper carries where you could learn about homemade remedies, including、mm -hmm. leeches, old bookshops and barber stores, barber old fashioned soda fountains、yeah. as well. Like an old hamburger joint. Oh, that looks amazing.、Oh, that looks so much like Tony Moon Museum Village with the food、oh, places、really? and the barber shop. Ah,、uh, yeah. Like a similar theme, but maybe looking、yeah. the American style. But maybe back in the days, I don't know, maybe they looked more similar than, than they do nowadays. Thank you so much, Kay,、Thank、for、you. showing us that. Indeedy.、Uh, Jen. Next week's theme, are we going to be doing the cherry blossoms then? Yes. But you,、um, you know, I plan to film it last weekend,、mm. but you, you have to know the、uh, Korea is currently quite、uh, colder than usual. So、mm. hopefully, I'm going to film it tomorrow、Fingers、and、crossed. show、yeah. you the beautiful scene of it. 
fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we we had a few people send in their photos because we previewed that last week and they were apologizing for not sending in the correct ones. It's okay. We will keep those photos for next Thursday. Uh, the cherry blossoms, I'm sure, will be peaking this weekend because mm-hmm. I've driven past Yoido and places like that and they look almost ready to film for Jem. In terms of our book winner for today, the fun and easy Korean recipes, Aaron Humphrey in Korea. You got in touch and you're going to win that prize this week. We've got another one to give away next time. Jen, thank you so much for coming into the studio thank and keeping you. it warm. Thank I you. Hope I, you I hope you get well soon, Peter. Thank you very much.